It always feels a little bit surreal leading up to this moment. But when the trophy lands on the stage, you know it's about to get real. But only one team is going to be able to claim this trophy and be crowned world champions. Let's get ready to kick off this grand finals match. Let's welcome to the stage the winner from the lower bracket. Rallying after their loss from class champs in the round before, let's bring out Repotted Gaming! And now, undefeated in the upper bracket, nearly flawless on offense and unbreakable defenses. Welcome to the stage, Clash Champs! We have Clash Champs starting things off again. And wait a second. I know those blue creatures. It's Super Bowlers. We haven't seen them that much over this tournament so far. But I'm really looking forward to what Clash Champs in Castro can do. They can show it out to us. Well, Eric has highlighted this numerous times, but whenever Clash Champs open with the three star, they are very difficult to defeat. So let's see if his plan is going to work. So far, the Flinger is getting good value down the bottom. He's got the base open, a little bit of a funnel already set. I do notice the Poison Tower behind the Town Hall, which is something you've been focusing on a little bit during the matches today as well, it seems. That's right, the poison behind the town hall. But at the same time, if you're going through the town hall, this means the town of poison and the point tower, they do not stack, which is perfect for him, even triggering the poison tower early. So perfect uh, case right there. And what you typically do is you try to charge the town hall, trigger the town of poison, and then play the super bowl to steal late through the town hall poison. And take a look at that. As soon as the troops are behind the town hall, one jump is going to open up everything. Yeah, this will allow him to save the Warden ability as well. As you correctly point out, once the Town Hall goes down, the Poison is now active and his Super Bowlers are nowhere near it. It's just about getting that timing. So they do move into this compartment before the Archer Queen starts seeking out everything else. Oh, oh and as I say that, two Super Bowlers walk around it too. Remember, a Super Bowl is our ranged troops, so funneling them is not too easy. And a Super Bowl is matched with just one Super Bowl it's not really that threatening, but we have seen Clash Champs turning around attacks like crazy. So can they make that work with one Super Bowl in the core? He's got the Archer Queen there as well, alongside the Grand Warden ability and the Rage Spell. He might be able to still make this work. They are getting great value, and if he could get that multi-target Inferno, which is he, he is about to, he's got the Queen ability, the Royal Champion ability, and multiple spells left over. Timing of these is critical, as he's allowing the Queen to absorb that damage first. Ability goes off, the Skeleton spell is already down, 40 seconds, and it's looking good for B. Castro to kick things off for Clash Champs. The Skeleton spell is their only hope, but he's already taking a sip of his water. He's got the free spell, and with only a few buildings remaining, Clash Champs take the early lead in the Grand Finals. Pete, 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 Pete. Ah! How can you not fall in love with Clash Champs and those celebrations? It is amazing to see their performance is next level and so are their celebrations. Putting the pressure on Reported Gaming, let's see if they can respond. Castro 
Maestro has to defend now, and it is versus General X. We have the Super Barbarians, we have a lot of supportive tools, and we have a Queen Charge yet again with the Rico spell. So far, it felt like the Queen Charge attacks did not work out that great for Reported, but it seems to be their only answer versus the basis of Clash Champs. Clash Champs using this time around an invisibility tower behind the town hall, which is always spelling danger for whoever is going to enter into that tower compartment. With the test and everything raining down, it means that those troops from the beginning are staying safe. There goes the heaters, but remember, he is using the recall spell. He is. There was one seeking air mine, but again, he's going to recall the queen out of there so he can be relatively safe versus the traps. He did have to use an extra couple of super barbarians to funnel the top, top defenses since the Builder Hood kept repairing them. And notice that the healers, like you said, just quickly redirect to the queen. And he also waited until the invisibility spell tower was popped before he did that. That's right. Having the healers transfer over, and now it's all about a huge hero dive into the core of this base. Wall break is going strong. The wall is open, yes. Quite a few spells left, even the jump spell to open up the entire base. Clan Castle is getting dealt with with some nice spells, and the warden ability should be used anytime soon. Yeah, I was waiting for that warden ability. It's just such huge damage moving into the base. Archer Queen still holding back a little bit here, too, and getting caught up, whilst the king is up top, but not really getting the value that he wants. Is that monolith going to survive? The invisibility spell tower is reactivating. That's right, the queen. No, queen. No, oh. don't go for that wall. Can she retarget? That would be huge for him. He's trying to turn the skin invisible to make sure the queen is going to go back, but she is not. She's staying on that wall. She is dedicated to take this storage out. But take a look at that. The siege has opened a cr really good path for this queen, but she's oh, having different plans. I mean, oh. that queen is like going crazy. The Alexa Collector at the bottom of the base was closest, so she wanted to go down and take that out first, naturally. But what that does for General X is mean that time continues to tick down. There is a huge amount of base. That invisibility spell tower reactivating again. Surely not a third time during one attack. He's still got a rage and an invisibility spell. Carefully waiting onto those headhunters to try and power them in towards the defending queen. There's the invisibility. He's saving onto the headhunters for cleanup at this point in two, because even if he doesn't three-star, he's got to try and push that percentage. 24 seconds, more troops are getting placed. The Queen with her ability and the Unicorn alive, but that Mojang are out of range. And as you said, the Invisibility Tower has reloaded and it's going to make a three-star impossible. The Queen ability has been used, and every single percentage point is important. But at this point, this is zero out of six for reported versus class champs. Zero out of six attacks they were able to successfully three star. And if this is not getting to their heads, that would be, be quite impressive. the Super Dragons returning and take a look at that. We even have the double recall spell. Just making sure that a troop, which is the Super Dragon, not needing that many <laughs> spells. And we have the crowd going <laughs> crazy and cheering for a defense to make this match as close as possible. That's what's fantastic about being in the arena, is just seeing the atmosphere and how everybody gets involved. I've got to say, I love the fact that he doesn't need two versions of Super Troops, so opts for the Super Giant here. It's got, it's got a huge amount of hit points, so it can tank that Queen for so much longer than what we normally see when regular Giants are used. Yeah, I think in general, it's just, just such a cool thing with the addition of the Recall spell. No one was really sure if it getting used a lot, then it got buffed, and now it's just everywhere, just being such a creative tool. And we have already have heard from earlier that those pros are just so good with those creative tools, and this is exactly now where those troops are getting placed right into that high damage area. 
Yeah, one seeking air mine hits a super dragon. He's waiting on that warden ability until the battle blimp moves through. The warden gets pushed back with the sweeper, catches the tornado trap, so he's trying to hold on to the ability. He does actually catch all of the super dragons bar one, and the battle blimp makes its route to the town hall, gets there with the rage. Now the rocket balloons fly to it, but with the town hall down, What's going to happen with these Clan Castle troops? The Lava Hound is going to slow down his heroes quite significantly. The Rocket Balloon's not going to cause too big of a threat. That's right, Rocket Balloons without their ability, it's not as dangerous for those heroes. But there's still quite a few defenses left standing. The Expos, the Defending King, the Defending Warden, and that defending scatter shot has to be taken care of. The skeleton traps are delaying things a little bit. The warden, the phoenix is going off. Crow is saying defense. Is it going to be? That's the question. King ability is getting used. It's hard to see with all of the hero abilities. Like you said, the king spawns all of the, those barbarians. And he also has the queen and royal champion ability with two expos firing at them. And look at the bottom of the screen as well. We've got the defending royal champion and the scatter shot. The confidence is not there for Clash Champs in this attack. They know it's not going to go through, but they have to try and get that percentage because reported gaming were right up there by 90. And then really, really good poison, defensive poison spell, delaying the Queen and the Royal Champ even further because at this point it's about time as well and every single building which you can defend. I mean, we have now the defense for reported. I remember how the last match went. Clash Champs have gotten the first two attacks, three stars. After that, that, that was it. No Ooh. more three stars. So having a defense now at this point is huge for reported. They just still have to search for their first three stars. That's the other problem. And on the flip side, yes, Clash Champs didn't get any other three stars, but reported didn't get any in that first matchup either. We hear the crowd for Clash Champs shouting defense. Both sides trying to rally the teams up together. And we do have the Super Barbarians. Two clone spells with the Battle Blimp selected. Now we have seen numerous Super Archer Blimp attacks. So I'm curious as to whether that is what we will see here. A couple of balloons to try and snipe buildings initially. Then the Battle Blimp flying through. Let's see where he's going to land here at two. He's landing right next to the town hall, and we see the super archers. There's the clone. And oh, the wall breakers got cloned! No way! That's the, that is just the worst possible moment. I mean, he opened the entire base, but this is not what you want to see. You have to delay the clone spells so that your test troops are able to get out of the way and be destroyed. But with the tornado trap, the super wall breaker didn't move forward and bust the wall. So that is a huge turn of events. Like you said, he still gets the town hall. All is not lost here, but with such a big investment, zero spells left over. This is tricky. It is for sure with everything now getting sent at the top side. The only good news, like for him right now, is that he had not to invest the Warden for that type of blimp. It was a blimp without the Warden ability, without a heavy investment on the troop space. Yes, spell-wise, it was quite an investment for sure, but maybe those troops can now power through the remaining defense because the Warden ability for that defending area at the bottom side with the Monolith and the Eagle, that I think is a great timing to use it and make sure that they're staying alive got to time the Royal Champion perfectly here as well because he's got no wall breaks or jump spells which means he doesn't have clear access into that compartment. He uses the Warden ability now with all of the Barbarians from the King trying to absorb damage whilst the Clan Castle troops are there as well. Thankfully he's got an Electro Titan but it is getting fired at and going to go down meaning any skeleton traps on defense now could be huge. The Queen trying to get through to that multi-target Inferno. She's got her ability but she's not oh. there whilst the other troops are tanking. That queen barely staying alive, but the expo on the back end is just causing a lot of problems. The super barbarians are getting added. The defending royal champ is going down. The royal champ on his, on his side is trying his best or her best to somehow power through a ground skeleton. Oh no, is it enough power though? 
really needed that Electro Titan for this moment. Royal Champion caught up, Scattershot locks on, once the Expo turns around, she will go down, and it is a huge defense for Clash Champs with the 89 just clicking into the 90s, 91%, 92% even, come on. <laughs> trying to get the percentage right here. 92% for Repotted Gaming. And Clash Champs, whilst they had that one little blip, they are still in the lead. And their bases still hold Repotted Gaming back. It is becoming their kryptonite at this point. is ready, we are ready, and we have Clash Champs going again with the Super Bowlers. And I feel like Reported definitely did not prepare for that since Clash Champs felt like bowlers were there, I don't know, Kryptonite to some degree as well during the qualifiers. But it seems like they really made sure that they know how to play this true. But where's the Queen going next? He's turning oh. some bidding's invisible, but the Queen is going for the... Okay, she's going around, going inside, and she has to do the same thing as with the other attack. She has to take down the Town Hall, and then you're going to enter with those boulders to avoid the Town of Poison. Yeah, fantastic job there. Quick reactions with the invisibility spell, just to make sure she did move on into the inside, because you can see how important that is. Now, just about to lock up the Town Hall. Ice Golems and Super Bowlers move in. Again, delayed, but trying to time it perfectly before those buildings go down. Seems like it's timed a little bit better this time to push the Super Bowlers forward. Oh, no, no, maybe I jinxed it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Perfectly though, that was really good to try and capture everything before they moved around. If he could get the Eagle Artillery here, which he does, and maybe a little bit more protection for the Queen moving through, he could still turn this around. I feel like that was one of those bait worn abilities. You, yes, you catch everything, but you know, take a look at this core. You do not want to approach this without the Warden ability. Rage up Expos, triple Rage up, or possible Rage up multi in front of towers. This is not fun to face and now it's all about the voters on the outside can they throw enough rocks to make this work we have the royal champ getting added early on to share the damage with that queen but with multi fern towers that's not as easy as that it's not and by the time the royal champion got the multi-target inferno down the super bowlers were already gone archer queen gets the rage tower royal champion and diggy doing a tremendous job here as the queen ability is popped she should be able to get the expo and the multi he's still got a free but the Royal Champion sadly does fall. This is incredibly close. The Queen can get these skellies. And I think time is a big problem here. He's recovered this incredibly well, but what are your thoughts, Itsu? It the Queen now stuck in that compartment. She's got to get out before she can start clearing any more of these buildings. Yeah, she, she's going further and further into that corner and going down eventually. And that percentage, below 80%, is not looking good for Clash Champs. The only good news for them is yep. that reported is zero out of seven. Zero three stars out of seven attacks versus their bases. We have Mac concentrating, and we have another Queen Charge Rico Super Barbarians. Those have not worked so far versus the bases of Clash Gems. Can they get their three-star now? This will be such a massive momentum swing for them. And he's starting things off with an ice golem with his queen to really make sure that this defending air defense and the Royal Champ together have no chances of taking down possible healers for him. But take a look at that. No, the healers are chasing, I think, some of the Seeky Gobs or even the Headhunter. The queen should turn around and charge into that scatter. But remember again, he has the recall spell, so time is for sure an issue. And wait, queen, come back. Where is she oh, going? Oh, no. What's he going to do here? Maybe send in a... He can't really even target them with the balloons. He just gives up on that section, recalls the queen, pops her over to three o'clock, and has to now make a backup plan towards that scatter. Queen taking a little bit of damage. I'm sure he didn't want to use any spells in this area because he was thinking the queen might have been better topped up if he did have to use a rage in that top compartment had she have walked in. 
manages to get through, though, has some pathing, but he's going to take some damage from that scatter shot as he deploys the troops to the most northern area of the base to support the king. Oh, there are the super barbarians, and now he has to be careful because that flinger, uh, th that Talk lock launcher, if it gets targeted, that would be really bad news for him. He wants to get as far as possible into that base. The eagle, the expo, the multi furniture, all of those have to go down because the queen and her healers are in danger otherwise. He's already used the warning ability, so with that raged up multi target inferno, they are going to take massive damage as the defending clan castle troops distract everything. What does he have inside that log launcher? And remember, he's still got to make sure the queen loops around for that town hall as she moves in. There's a lot of distractions here. He's got the royal champion as a bit of a backup and obviously all of the super barbarians. But there's the rage. The invisibility, lovely rage there actually to catch the Yeti Zitsu. That's right, the rage was quite nice for him. But take a look at that, there goes the freeze. The healers are getting captured alive, but now it's all about the back end. Oh, look at that! Take a look at that, the rage tower inside the middle of one, two, three, four, five Tesla, two Expos, scanner, multi phone tower. I think you can't put in any more defenses in there. You cannot, he's got no warden ability. He's got the freezes, which he has to time perfectly. Just missed the rage spell activating, so the royal champion is taking huge damage with the skeleton trap distracting her. Queen down the bottom of the base. She's got her ability, but does she have time to come up? Great use of the invisibility to try and keep the royal champion moving, but she's stuck now. And the tornado trap proves to be fatal for Mech. Using the queen ability to get into the 90s, they can have the percentage, but they're not able to close out the three stars, which means Clash Champs still have the lead and they need to try and get another triple because the momentum has to be picked back up for them. Like you've correctly said, if Reported Gaming are able to convert, they are well out in front. Loop coming in with one of E. well, Basically the same approach as what we have just seen. Is he going to use the Battle Blimp initially though? A couple of loons and the Warden ability. We've seen numerous Yeti Blimps from Clash Champs deciding to rage this area to try and get the Eagle, the Expo and Multi, which he should be able to easily get. He's got the Clan Castle full and alongside the use of those loons initially, he's got a huge path created. So there is nowhere else for the Queen to go. She's pretty well protected whilst taking out the Lava Hound. Then we've just got to see the follow-up. 30 seconds in, everything going to plan so far. It's really good that his Warren survived because he can take out those buildings up top and get a little bit extra value, which could be crucial when it comes down to time. That's right. I think we have seen this exact attack already earlier with the only difference it were, were Hog Riders as a follow-up, and that was from Super BLTX. So did Clash Champs say, well, we like that Queen shot. It did go well with the jump into the Town Hall, but then we want to do something different. We want to do this Super Barbarians instead of the Hog Riders, because let's be honest, the, the Hogs so far in this event had not the greatest success. They have not, and I remember it was such an extensive queen charge, wasn't it, that he was really running short on time. There is the jump, just like you said. The Coco Loons making sure to protect the healers, because if anything goes wrong with the queen charges, it can then go horribly wrong. Has the Rage Tower popped, and he's not really under any other damage other than the Rage to Expo. An aggressive Rage on the Queen alongside the Invisibility means as she steps forward to the Town Hall, she's still under Rage. That's right, still under Rage, and time is really, really important. We have the Royal Champ getting at it on the outside. Oh, the Super Barons out there. There goes the Warbreak. The Queen is staying alive. And now it's all about the push. One minute for round about 30% left of the space. 30% and I'm watching that Rage Tower. There it goes activating as the Ice Golem is flung off. He's now got to try and swarm that area. Two freeze spells to perfectly time. There is the first to protect the Royal Champion. Archer Queen is using the ability. He is celebrating because with 40 seconds left, so many 
many troops and spells. He surely he's got this. Now, it's very hard for them to remain calm. I, I was thinking, stay there just for another couple of seconds until the three star is guaranteed. But in his head, he knew it. That is now a huge lead for Clash Champs. And they are within touching distance of that trophy that they are staring at this entire match. And we can see the celebration, the energy, the relief of getting that three star. Tim Tessic, he has to do it for his team. He is having quite an interesting army composition with a battle drill and a couple of invisibility spells. Are we going to witness again the invisible drill, the invisible blizzard, if you want to call it that way? Where is it? Is he going to start? That's the big question. He's starting with a couple of super barons. There goes the drill. What are the defenses? He's going to turn invisible. It's going to be the bottom ones. So he is targeting the bitter huts. The drill is going through, and he's going to have his blizzard right behind that town hall. Manages to turn them invisible. Do they get caught on the lava hound hit? No, they are going to stay there and then get the town hall down, get the other defenses. Can he chain through the rest of this huge value from this blizzard? Is he going to use another invisibility? He's accepting that value, but I think that's more than, well, exactly what he could have expected. Yeah, really, really good. Creative way on approaching that base. And back in the days, Tomtastic was known as one of the best blizzard lado attackers in the entire world. But now we have the queen starting her dive, going for that eagle compartment, going for that eagle direction. We have the king charging into that scatter compartment. Indeed, with the royal champion now reinforcing as well. All of the barbarians can swarm this area, help to get through the skeleton traps, dodge the giant bomb there as well, which was really nice. And look at the pathing of the royal champion here, thanks to the blizzard. She's just going to hop straight on into that eagle compartment and start to take down those defenses. Grand Warden still able to be utilized here as well, alongside the Lalo. So huge value from Tim Tastic. The invisibility for the Royal Champion, really wanting to save onto that ability. Off it goes. Can he get this section though? I think he really wants the Eagle Artillery to. That's right, another invisibility spell is invested. The HP, is it going to drop? The Expo, the Monolith, and yes, it's going down. And then we have the Lado starting into the last scatter, into the last Rage Tower area with the Queen and those Headhunters. If there's any spring traps, that could be really, really devastating. There is the defensive rage going off with the Warden ability perfectly timed to mitigate that. Alongside the haste spells to quickly get them in, start taking the defenses down. Lava Hound also pops the Tornado Trap down the bottom, which is fantastic. And he still has seven balloons left to use, trying to just pick off that bottom air defense if he can. The balloons have got to get down to that monolith. 30 seconds into, what do you think? The Queen has stayed alive. The Headhunters did not take her down. He has to the freeze, but the Warden is next he has to freeze it and he sees already he is not happy because that queen we have talked about it her staying alive could be really bad for the attack with picking off the warden he's got nothing to take the clan castle down even if he gets the defenses he's going to run out of time here meaning it is yet another Two-star Clash Champs' bases being on another level. And now all they need is the two stars to claim the World Championship title. We have seen the celebrations of Clash Champs. You can see it in their faces. You know how much that defense meant to them. And they know they are so, so close. They have clearly been the best team team so far and this is the moment can they do it the finisher has to finish this with only needing two stars 
to claim the World Championship title. And yes, <laughs> <laughs> he, he celebrates he's already, already celebrating. Like, he knows Super Dragons for the town hall. He doesn't even need to send all of the Super Dragon. It's just getting the town hall, Flame Flinger. Let that even work for like one minute. He does not need the time. Yep. They do not care about three stars. Two stars, town hall and 50%. This is what this strategy screams to me right now. This is exactly what I would say. This is what I would do, and I admire him for just doing this, to be honest. Yeah. So many times we see people trying to force the three-star strategy, make a mistake, and then they lose the war because they one star. Selenio, swallowing his pride, doesn't care about his own personal stats. He cares about his team victory, which I think is very uh, admirable. So, Super Dragon's in. He does commit them all into. He's not missing that town hall. He's going to use the king and the royal champion for cleanup and that 50%. But that is the marker, though. 50%. The Super Dragons are going to get caught up behind the town hall. Let's see what he can do. I mean, not going to lie. Really surprised that he has sent all of those Super Dragons into that Town Hall because he could have just, I mean, at this point you see how easy he has gotten the Town Hall. Just, like, circle the Whoa. entire base. It's 10 more, 12 more percentage. The Flinger is going and he has not even deployed the King and the Royal Champion yet. Just send them on the outside. Take the non-defensive buildings. Valkyries were not. He's celebrating. He can't focus and I don't blame him. I couldn't either. There is the two attack and just enjoy their victory. They, I feel, have been the underdog for so long, but they came into this tournament smashing teams getting a very impressive victory over Navi as well. We can give them a round of applause as this year's runners up, but it is Clash Champs who are your 2023 World Champions. Now they can celebrate and they are going crazy. They've snapped the trophy here. Phenomenal performance, absolutely Brilliant job by Clash Champs. The strength is too much. There is their check for $300,000 for first place. And you see it on the top. Clash of Clans World Championship winners. It is Clash Champs. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. It is such a relief to all of those fans. They were by far the loudest in the crowd. They were cheering for them non-stop. They were cheering for defenses, for three stars, for everything. And it was just their time to shine. Going all the way and well-deserved.